best high school teams going head to head. But before we get into the games, I must introduce myself and my co-caster for today's particular game. My name is Ewan Yardis Reed, joined by Casting Reinhardt. My friend, how are you today? I'm feeling thrilled. Like, this is looking pretty interesting. It hasn't even started, but looking at what we've got in our lineup, I'm really keen to see how these teams are going to play out against each other. I mean, it's a battle for the top of the ladder. Like, exactly. one team's 4-0, and o, the other team's 3-1. and one. That, you know, if it could go any way, and it's pretty much like you know, a battle to say, you know, to see who's going to remain at the top of the ladder at this point. Exactly, and talking about the teams, I think it's only fair that we do introduce them. So, uh, on the blue side for today, we do have Caring Bar High. I do hope I pronounced that correctly. As you said, 4-0, and zero, currently undefeated as of the fifth week of Meta. But their opponents, being Fairvale High School, have something to prove. They're 3-1, and one, and uh, Caring Bar High are going to be put in a little bit of a, uh, a bind today, because... They, if they win this, like you said, they've established themselves as one of the stronger teams when it comes to the Meta League. But if they drop this game, they're going to draw even with Fairvale because they'll both be on a 4-for-1 four record. And that could really throw a wrench in the works for what they are aiming for. Because if you can end the season at the very top of the ladder without drop, with dropping as few games as humanly possible, it's a statement and a fear factor that goes into your opponents. I like the way you put that. And... It's essentially, it's essentially like it, it speaks for itself. And like when we see both games, like both teams play against each other tonight, you know, their team synergy and whatnot will really shine. And like this, like it'll essentially establish why they're, you know, they're at the top of the ladder in this current state of mind. I mean, you know, it really comes down to how you, t how you play well together. And if your team can understand, like, you know, the game to the point that you know where your strength lies and your weakness lies in terms of. You know, mid game, sorry, early game, mid game, and late game. Well, essentially, like, that just really makes a, a perfect statement right there. Exactly, but we will have to get into game to find out what these teams have prepared as we are firing away the bands. I do have to warn our audience, however, that not everyone is in pick order, unfortunately. Some people don't have access to every champion, so I'm going to quickly go over who is going to be in what lane in case people say, hey, that person's not uh, hovering the right champion. So for carrying bar high, Luden's in the top lane. We have Met. Emphis in the jungle, Lanson rocking out in the mid lane, and we have the duo of Midja and Fizzy in the bot lane. Fairvale, however, Sham in the top, Fox in the jungle, uh, 88 keys is rocking out mid, with Cool and Soba in the bottom lane. So we're going to see who locks in what champions, as right now the biggest thing that I recognize, Reinhardt, Fairvale have banned the Shaco and the Kha'Zix, a real pinch onto the jungle pool for the jungle of Karangbar High. It only makes it only makes sense to have two execute based champions locked, well, you know, taken away, so that way they have a bit more comfortability when they get ganked. I mean, you want to be able to get yourself out of a pinch in case you know your bottom team or just in general, like you know, you're over pushing in your lane. You still want to be able to get out of there if you get ganked from behind. And taking away Kazakh's Checo enables a little bit more, you know, freedom of movement, even if you're getting a little bit ahead of your. I guess you could say your enemy laner or like, you know, your counterpart in a sense. So it makes a lot of sense. Exactly. But talk about getting ahead. We do see both junglers locked in as well. The Hecarim and the Rek'Sai locked in. Now Rek'Sai, not too surprising, extreme powerful of a, a jungle champion right now. But the Hecarim lock in early really surprised me because Hecarim in my eyes is always a, a hit or a miss. Hecarim either gets fed as all hell or he struggles to get a high impact in the game for his team. That is definitely true, and one thing to point out with Hecarim is that he really comes online once he gets that Trinity Force. I mean, if he goes... Historically, we see Hecarim's take away the Keystone of Predator. So, like, they get that extra amount of movement speed, or should I say that massive burst of movement speed, on top of his E, which gives him even more movement speed on top of... And I'm pretty sure Hecarim is the only champion in the League of Legends that gains extra attack damage based on his bonus movement speed, so... It'll be interesting to see that, and since he's taken away Ghost, it pretty much like speaks for itself right there. Rek'Sai, however, has actually made a comeback in the last, I believe it's the last two patches, when they fixed up Hail of Blades to allow champions like Rek'Sai, Xin Zhao, and a couple of, uh, couple of other basic attack-based champions to proc their Hail of Blades, but they get more succession out of it because Hail of Blades doesn't actually proc on uh, empowered basic attacks. So Rek'Sai's Q allows him to fully stack his uh sorry when he uses his q he gets all three attacks 
within very quick succession to be able to uh, maximize his rage pool and convert his E damage from physical to true. So that could be a very, that could be like, you know, a core reason as to why Rek'Sai is being taken away for game number one of tonight. Exactly, but we are powering our way through. We are almost second round of bands. We do get to see the, the duo lanes on screen. Mm -hmm. Morgana for carrying Bar High, while Alistair Ezreal for Fairvel. So very interesting lanes, because the Kaiser Morgana tells me that you want a lack of interaction, while Ezreal, Alistair, Kind of tells me you want to force an engage, but against the likes of Obagana and someone who's mobile like a Kaisa, you know, is the Alistair really going to be able to find a, a priority target? It, like I said, like we, like I think you can agree with me when I say this, it really depends on how well, you know, their laner manages to lock them down. If Rek'Sai can get within close vicinity, they will be able to, to you know, help him out and, you know, allow him to unleash himself a little bit. I'll have to find out as we are through the second round of bands, the Zillion and the Vladimir taken away by Fairvel, targeting that middle lane champion pool where they can. But then beside Sion, Akali, bit of a top lane, bit of a mid focus. So we'll have to see what they do end up locking in for themselves. The Nar is the first one for the top lane there. But interestingly, 88 Keys with that mid lane has blind picked the Cassidon, which is super risky. And Lancet hovering over the Aurelia really excites me. I'm really interested. I'm really liking what I'm seeing as well. I mean, we've got Morgana Kaiser taken away for bottom, which is really nice to see. Nah taking him for top lane. Now I can only assume that he's really ma he's mainly doing it to you know enable his team to catch up a little bit when he gets to mid game because Nah himself is not exactly an early game champion. He does need to hit level six to come online a little bit better. Plus, he needs some items, like mainly defensive items, to help him stay alive within team fights. Because he goes from being a range champion to melee once he hits that mega form, and he really needs to be in on the fray to be able to unlock himself. Because he's ulti to throw people against the wall, he needs to be inside, you know, their entire their entire team fight to be able to unlock himself. Aurelia is just historically a really nice champion. Ever since her remodel, she can go in on team fights. Just she plants her ulti. She gets reset cues on every single champion, essentially, that she decides to like focus on. That it really it, like gives their team a lot of mobility, a lot of um, damage output in short succession. And to finish it off, like you've got a lot of CC coming around, like Morgana, for example, as well as Hecarim. Kaiser is just really good overall. Like her ulti allows her to gap close on somebody with a shield. You've got like, you know, her Q that allows her to do split damage or even a lot of focus damage on one target. And her passive is unlike Vayne, it can just stack on every single person she hits, not just one person. And that's where an item like Renin's Hurricane really makes it really makes it effective for her, especially, you know, when she begins to pop off when she gets her Gwinzo's Rage Blade as well as uh, something else on top of Renan's Hurricane. That, like, she could be a real deadly contender. And if Morgana focuses on protecting her, it's going to be a different... Like, it's going to be a very interesting story. But looking over on the other side from Fairvale High, we've got just as much an interesting team comp. Like, we've got Maokai, who can just open up his team with his... Uh, throwing down his ulti, letting those uh, Roach grab onto people. Kassadin, who's really good against mage-based uh, champions, like, for instance, Morgana, and I guess you can say some of Kaisa's abilities, but he also has a comfortable time taking on Hecarim. And since he can get in and out of a pinch just with his ulti, if he has enough mana, because he's the only champion that has the shortest ultimate cooldown, but also, but also comes at the cost of, like, you know, increasing mana cost per use. And that's going to be something that we would have to look out for. I am a little bit curious about the bottom lane, though. Like, we've got Ezreal and Alistair picked on. Now, Alistair could be a little bit of a problem if Morgana picks up that black, you know, black shield and times it perfectly so that way Alistair can't actually CC anybody. I mean, what are your thoughts at the moment, Ethos? I mean, I look at the, line, I look at the lineups and I think to myself, I really, really like Karabar High's lineup. And the reason is, I look at Fairvale and I don't think that necessarily they've got a bad lineup. They've got a really solid tank in the top lane with that Maokai. They've got Ezreal, who is a very safe, safe laning champion. And they've got Kastan, who, if they can get him to the late game, is an absolute monster. But my concern is that, A, they need to get to this later game where Ezreal has his tier stack, where Kastan, you know, is has access to that level 11 Rift Walk. 
And I just don't think they're going to get there because Carol, they've got an aggret, they've got a winning top lane, Nara into the Maokai. They should have a winning mid lane with Aurelia being able to dumpster uh, 88 keys as Cassidan. And then the bottom lane, Alistair, as you said before, Reinhardt, should never be able to engage against uh, Midget and Fizzy purely because of the black shield that's available to them. So it, it feels to me that Fox and uh, Emphis, whichever of these two junglers has a bigger impact in the first, I'd say, 15 minutes of the game, will be able to set that team up and be able to win through the jungle. But I look at the impact, Rek'Sai, Hecarim, they can both do super, super well, it can also blow up in your face in the span of about three seconds if the gank gets turned around. So I'm a little concerned, <laughs> but I just, I really like the lineup of Caraba. They've got an aggressive winning top lane. They've got a winning lane in the middle lane. And sure, they're not going to win bottom lane, but they shouldn't be losing it either. So two winning lanes and a standard lane, I definitely have to put it in favor of Caraba if I, if I have to be honest with you there, right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remain on the fence on this one. I mean, it's too early to tell. I'm not too familiar with both teams, so... I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, see how this game plays out. But it's definitely carrying it. They have two major players on the team that have two rounds. Lance in the red lane and Mephis, who's playing as their jungler. Now, if they're both really, like, I know jungler's really good to make himself known on the map. And if it becomes a battle of the junglers, I feel like, you know, Mephis is going to show us, you know, how, much, how effective he can be as a jungler and how he can try and take control of the game, you know, where it becomes necessary. And if Lanson is able to roam, you know, round top, bottom, or even help Mephis take River Scudder or try and counter jungle and just, you know, 2v1 onto, where is he? Onto, there he is, Fox. Uh, it could be, a, it could be a different story. And like, it could sort of like begin to set the foundation for Caring Bar. And like, when I say set the foundation, I mean, we'll begin to see, like, a gap between both teams begin to accumulate. But I'm, that's only my prediction at this point. Like, I'm not saying anything set in stone. That's just that's just what I can really see based on, you know, what we, uh, based on hero stats, essentially. No, sorry, summoner stats. That's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Wrong game of using the word hero there, my friend. But I, I do agree with you. It's around, I've, as an expression that another caster that I've casted with before uses, and I'm going to steal it out from under him. This meta, and especially Season 9, is a gank first ask questions later sort of meta and i you compare the two junglers both junglers are very capable of ganking both junglers are very capable of having high impact in the lane uh that they are deciding to visit but i just look at the mid lane then the mid lane then as you mentioned wants to roam who's gonna roam earlier 88 keys is cassidy or lanson's aurelia in the early game i think it's a little obvious who's gonna have the, the stronger early game between an aurelia and a cassidy that is true, but then again, it does come down to how how the players decide to conduct themselves. I mean, if Aurelia gets very aggressive on top of Cassidy and forces him backwards, she can roam around just as easily. But once Cassidy hits level six, the story can change because he can essentially just, I believe it's, I think, it, did you say it was Phase Walk or what, like, what's the name of his ulti again? Uh, Rift Walk. Rift Walk, that's the one. Yeah, if he can get his Rift Walk going. And like it's like Rift Walk allows him to essentially just jump over everything. It's just it's like a free flash, you know. It has very short cooldown. The mana cost does increase, but if he times it well and he minimizes use between lanes, he will have the advantages. That is something for certain. Exactly. Uh, uh, before we load the game, we do have to make sure that we are synced up. So we all are at fifteen seconds. So we'll be going live in three, two, one, and we are in to the game. So. We have, of course, Caraba High and Fairvel High School going head to head. The winner of this game is critical. If Caringbar can grab themselves the win, they sit 5 and 0 oh, undefeated after five weeks of the games. While their opposite numbers will, if they manage to get this one under their belt, they'll be able to secure themselves an equal first place with the opposite numbers. And we're seeing nothing early coming out of these two teams, just lines of scrimmages. So then, once again, we have to ask ourselves. Where are these jungles going to go in the early game? That is definitely something that we want to look out for. And I uh, like at the moment we're seeing boards from both sides almost. Uh, more of a 4 1 split happening from Fair Vale, but I like carrying Bar's attitude. Like, they're pretty much watching every single entrance to their jungle, and they want to make sure that they know where a lot of Fair Vale actually is at this point. And it's nice to see, like, they've got a lot of communication going. 
they've got a lot of awareness around and they're trying to be as effective through uh, you know, champion vision as much as possible before we can begin to ward about. And just as we saw just then, I like that Lanson has already put down a ward over in the pixel board. So they're going to look out to see where where Fox is actually going to run around to, like if he goes for top scutter or bottom scutter. It really depends because they can actually act on him if they're careful enough. Exactly. Well, let's see, as both junglers are electing to start on the bottom side of the map, and for the Hecarim, that makes a lot of sense. Grab your ref buff, grab your sustain, but it's interesting to me that Kaisa, sorry, not Kaisa, the Rek'Sai coming out of Foxy is electing for a bottom side start. It just seems a little untraditional, as we're seeing, this is exactly what we're expecting in mid lane. Lanson bullying away on 88 with a very good matchup here. I really like that we saw in that trade between both mid laners that really managed to actually proc her Conqueror, so she was going to have a bit more of an advantage right there. I mean, she gets the bonus attack speed from her passive, the extra attack damage as well, but Conqueror also enables her to heal herself through everything she really does. And if, you know, if Cassidy really tries to go head on with that, the only thing he really has to fall back on is his fleet footwork, and well, let's face it, it's not, it's, it's not as strong as like Conqueror would be in this instance. Exactly, but it's one of those survivors where 88 Keys just has to survive the lane. He's not expecting to win, he just has to go even, or at least not fall too far behind. So we'll see how that does continue to play out as, again, I want to keep focusing on these junglers, and it's super interesting. Both junglers going for a super heavy clear. They've cleared all of their bottom side, and there is the potential for a fight around the scuttle, but Fox is super low, and I think he just has to give up the top scuttle side. His 88 keys, I mean, this is exactly what we're expecting out of this matchup. He is just having a really rough time in this mid lane. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Early game, he's going to be at a... And I believe you said it as well. Early game, he's going to be at a disadvantage. Mid game, once, or should I say, once he hits level 6, he's going to have a little bit more freedom to be able to, you know, roam about and do things, but... At this point, he's going to have to be very passive with his ability to farm. Otherwise, he's going to take too much uh, upfront damage from Aurelia's ability to actually get close like that. I mean, it could be really disastrous if he lets Aurelia get right on top of her, because she can keep treading onto him right up until he hits level 6. I mean, he can get out at level 6 just before then. We're talking about getting on top there. Actually, all in, and that's first blood coming up for land and Ignite as well. Fox is trying to hunt down Lance, but I don't think he has enough damage to come do it. We are now visiting the top side of the map, actually, as Luden and Chami are duking it out. But it looks like, at the end of the day, Fox unable to get the revenge kill on to Lanson there. And Lanson picks up an easy first blood. I guess, I guess as I was trying to finish that sentence, just that, you know, that engage right there, using that, that line stun from Irelia, just really shows how aggressive she can really get. And since he got hit by that line, she essentially managed to get two effective cues on top of him. And... That's a lot of damage, especially when you've got Conqueror up, because I'm pretty sure she gets extra damage from using it, as well as extra healing. And because Rek'Sai went in on her while Conqueror was still up, that enabled her to actually heal up a little bit of damage. But it looks like top lane, we've got a bit of a trade happening between these two. Loons and Shami trading that, but the issue is that this is not favored. Nar does more damage, and while Shami does have a bit of a CS advantage, he may be forced back soon. Loons has nearly got access to the Neganar, and without mana, Shami really can't do a whole lot. He needs access to that mana pool, and actually, he might just die right here on the top side. Luden might oh. to hunt him down. A couple more hits will do it, and that's going to be an easy kill. Not oh. the flash keeps him out, but the boulder to the face takes him out. That was a very cunning flash from him right there. I actually thought it was going to go away. Oh, really, Fox. But then you see him jump in. Fox has flash. No! Fox misses the flash. Oh, and that's a disaster in the top side. <laughs> that was... I, I'm astonished, actually. Like, that was such a clean getaway. Like, we thought he was going to go down. Although mid lane, though. Oh, 88 keys is in so much trouble. The Hecarim coming in as well just to prove our point. The pony jumps in the flash. Is it going to say oh! it's a one for one trade? 88 keys can't be sad with that. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think he would be sad with that whatsoever. I mean, even though Hecarim did. Irelia still managed to claim the assist as well as she has free lane for at least 20 seconds. Like we can see Rex are coming down. Kassan has just respawned, but without that teleport, it's essentially, you know, it's it's just as bad as, like, Alistair being caught in Morgana's snare. It's, it's not exactly anything that's going to come about from it. Exactly. And this is sort of what we're expecting, just not in this way. I was expecting, you know, 
Emphis and Fox to be the primary focus points for both these teams, but it appears that Lanson wants to do one better. Says, hey, I've got myself a super advantage matchup, and I really want to punish it. Sitting at over 10 CS advantage, he's got really good items, and Aurelia, if she's able to scale up and able to get that Trinity Force, for example, this is going to be a hell of a painful uh, lane in the mid lane. I feel like once she gets that Trinity Force, that's when she really, like, that's when she essentially champion, and... You know, her ability to essentially get better as the game progresses will just only get, like, you know, more offensive with, the you know, the more items she claims. And when I, like, some items for suggestion would be uh, Steric's Gauge as well as Guardian Angel. I mean, those two items are commonly picked for a champion like Aurelia, and it can really keep her in a fight for a very long time. And since Conqueror heals her, she's going to stay in, like, she's pretty much going to become, like, a very, very mobile, aggressive tank that has more health rather than you know defensive stats like armor and magic resistance exactly so a bit of a I, look forward to seeing that. I mean the phrase i like to use for a champion like that is the raid boss someone who like you don't know why they do so much damage you don't know why they're so tanky but you know it's a bit of a little both you're seeing predator being popped in the mid lane but a little bit ambitious coming out of mf Emphis right there i like the attempt trying to focus down that lane but not the best use of the predator it still was effective nonetheless. I think he just he misread the situation a little bit. I mean, Cassidy still has more than half health, and he has his ulti now, so he'll be able to get out of a bench even if he gets knocked backwards, as well as uh, feared from Hecarim's charge, or should I say his ulti, sorry. Um, I think he would need to like sort of, uh, sort of evaluate the situation a little bit better if he wants to go in for another attempt. But, you know, that really comes down to how Eddie Akees really plans to play himself out. I mean, if he stays... As defensive as he is, he's going to have a comfortable time. But if he gets, you know, really aggressive, as much as Rek'Sai has been when he decided to come mid lane and top lane, it could be a bit of a situation changer and throw really ahead quite if, um, even further. I mean, she's already ahead with an assist as well as, I believe it's like 18 CS. But, you know, it could, like the situations can develop as time progresses. Exactly, but what is also going to progress is the dragon being picked up right there. Uh, it's going to be a wind dragon going in favor of Karang Bahai, which, I mean, it's not the best dragon in the world, but when you're running a comp that, you know, wants to kite backwards and then kite forwards to re-engage a fight like they're running, it actually is a pretty good lineup as we're seeing Loon on the top side. The ultimate's being dropped. A chamois is not thrown into the wall, but I don't think it's going to matter. A couple more hits will do it. The Rex side, though, can Fox save his top lane? And yes, he can! It's not even needed! As Shammy kills out Ludens, slim of his teeth, though, almost managed to survive. Like it was a it was a battle of who could get the BA, and as we could see, Hecker, sorry, Maokai mainly won because you know he managed to pop his passive a few times, and it healed for a large portion of his health. It was just unfortunate for not uh, for Ludens that he was already at half health when they decided to go in for a proper team fight, as well. I guess you could say, like, when he initiated that by popping ultiform and bouncing over, it was pretty much, you know, he got caught out of bounds just as much as that Cassidy did just then. Lanson really playing aggressive, but he needs to be a little bit careful. Fox is waiting in the wings, and Rek'Sai, a very mobile ganker. Lanson might even engage there, but the question is, can he get out alive? Yes, he can. The waltzing back him off. Immediate flash. Vanguard, oh. airdrop for the re-engage. Fox is already gone. That was a deletion of the enemy jungler right there. I don't think I don't think Rexai was prepared for such a comeback like that. Just like you know, an ulti and a Hecarim to come in response. I'm not really 100 percent sure whether Hecarim claimed anything in that fight though. Like it, it the screen sort of moved off, of, you know, from before that fight even finished. That I, it was a little bit too soon to tell. Exactly, but Lanson did secure himself the red buff, which is going to be huge for this Aurelia right now. She's already stamping on her, st sorry, stamping dominance on her lane. A red buff for the sustain in a champion who has a heal in her kit, and a Trinity Force now fully completed at not even 11 minutes. This is Lanson stamping dominance in this game, and he needs to keep this up, though. If he simply sits back and lets 88 keys farm up and get into this game, it is a disaster because Cassidy and is a, is, a, is a timer. You have to keep Cassidy down or end the game before Cassidy becomes a real threat. Because if the, if the time gets, you know, he's got three items, he's got all the mana he needs. Cassidy's going to one-shot Midget on the bottom side of the map there, and there wouldn't be a whole lot they can do about it. Oh, just seeing an ADC get one shot like that from mid lane, especially like the late items to pop off. 
it, uh, it, it sort of sends shivers down my spine, and like it's it's sort of really going to create a bit create a bit more of a one sided situation. I mean, they would have to defend their ADC quite heavily against one person, and if it comes to that, well, your team's essentially going to have to start looking for picks rather than actually going in on a five v five situation. Exactly. Let's see how that goes, though, as we are seeing Fox once again coming to poke his nose around the middle lane. And it's a little bit unfortunate for Fairvale that Fox hasn't been able to uh -oh. find anything. But not from a lack of trying, as Keys is in a lot of trouble. Lanson, though, without the Vanguard's Edge, cannot afford to go in. But that's simply a skirmishing trade. And 88 Keys is at half health. It was an interesting trade, nonetheless. Both players decided to test themselves out. Heck. 88 Keys did have to retreat, unfortunately. So Lanson has shown that, you know, he's come online. He's going to dish a lot of damage if 88 Keys goes a little bit too far in. I mean, it's nice that, you know, he really wants to keep up, but he's got to be careful. Indeed, but I'm being careful so far. This is what we're talking about. He can't engage. He's going to wait for that Black Shield to wear off. Uh -oh. Finally, it's time, but I fear it might be a little bit too late. Drops the ulti as the camera somehow comes up to mid lane. As we are seeing Lenson just destroying oh. Keys oh. in an easy pickup under the turret. He doesn't give a damn about the turret on the bottom side as Keys falls down in the middle lane. The Hecarim Tower died, but Neil needs to get the hell out of the dodge. Teleport coming in from the Maokai as well. Everything and the kitchen sink being thrown around in this game, but it doesn't look like anything's really going to come out. The Flash Root coming out, but it's not going to be enough. Oh. Double knock up the Heck Room as well. He's oh. diving away. He's going to go down at the edge. Of, trying to do what he can. Midget on a hill. Needs to run for his life. One oh. more hit will do it. He's kiting it out. Fox oh. is going to go down. One more turret hit will do it. And Fox dies, but his AD Gary pick up the kill. That was a... That was very... Like, I, I am astonished. Like, that was such a huge turnaround. Like... Yes, Aurelia won against Kassadin, but then Rek'Sai came in to finish up and then started coming towards bottom lane. Meanwhile, we saw Heck, we saw Maokai throw down that teleport, come down, help them claim Kaiser for a bit of a revenge uh, spout right there. And like it was nice to see that Rek'Sai managed to go under and help them, you know, claim it in the end. Unfortunately, he did overextend a little bit, so you know he was already low on he was already too low on health. But oh, considering he went Lanson, right under, you're a cruel man. This Again, that is without Vanguard's Edge available to him. Just imagine when he has access to that ultimate. How much damage is Aurelia is going to be able to do? I, I feel like it, I, I don't really want to see how that's going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you're going to have much of a choice in the matter. Rek'Sai is hanging around mid lane once again, but I fear if they try and gank this lane, Lance and Simba going to be like, all right, cool, I'm committing to 88 kills, 88 kill keys again, killing him again, and we'll see what we take from there. <laughs> Oh, it's like it's like it's like you're essentially watching a scary movie. And don't go down that hallway. Like it's it's <laughs> going to happen regardless whether you like it or not. And this is well, what has gone down the hallway. He's going in for key. Drops the ignite, but it's not going to be enough. The tower shot does most of the damage, oh! and the Rexai ultimate sinking the fangs into Aurelia. Oh, just as soon as you hit, as soon as you're at low health, you're highlighted from Rexai, and you hear that scream. It's just like I'm ready for the end right there. It's just. I am at peace with myself. Engage coming out on the bottom side of the map. Midget is already Bashy Watch as his AD carry is, uh, well, executed. Well, at least she didn't give away the kill, that's for sure. Uh, Shammy trying to force the fight on the looters, but I think he realizes, wait a second, that's a Black Cleaver Nah. Like, my resistances do nothing against a Black Cleaver Nah like that, Maokai. You gotta back away, man. I ha this is something I definitely want to point out. I've seen this done recently, especially in top lane champions who take on Black Cleaver. They've also gone for Blade of the Ruined King against tank tanky champions on top of having Black Cleaver because one, reduces armor, two, it also does maximum health damage. Ooh, skirmish round, Rift Tail's gonna interrupt you there, my friend. They are getting a bit of a double fear coming out. Loon's now going on to Fox. Fox is the priority target. They need to kill the jungle. A lovely knife into the wall. Oh, on the top side, we are seeing Aurelia having a bit of fun with Cassidy, and unsurprisingly, Jammy is trying to get the turnaround, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Misfits is simply keeping the Maokai around. Aurelia is on the back line, but Shami forced to watch as they don't get anything. They lose their Herald. It does reset, but it's probably going to go down. And there is the potential. Aurelia is actually coming up behind the Maokai, and it's the dancing game. <laughs> Nival wants to commit to the root. Luden decides, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve this for you. I'm gonna kill this man. Oh! oh, he turns it around. The true shot barrage takes all of Luden's health. 
just from downtown, through mid lane, right in your face. Ezreal right, also just completely <laughs> finishing off and stealing the kill right there. Oh, that was an impressive, that was an impressive, like, you know, sneaky shot from Cool Panda. I don't think they had any idea that was coming in, and Shammy's is in a bit of a trouble here. One more hit will do it. Yeah, there we go. 5-2 Aurelia. This is a champion. I don't think anyone can fight the Aurelia right now. Maokai has a lot of armor, but it's not going to save him. No, and I think, <laughs> when you said, I don't think they noticed it, it was just as much as how much we noticed it. Like, we just see it on screen. Nah is doing well to trade, but then just out of nowhere, you see this nice ray of light just fl like flying through the wind like an eagle hawk. And claiming an easy one right there, and he's already he's already getting ahead of Kaiser. I mean, he's ahead in CS. He's now a kill ahead. He's still claiming. He's still flying around on that perfect KDA score. He's finished his he's finished his mana moon. I'm very I'm, I'm feeling a little bit scared for Kaiser at the moment because she's done so well up until this point. But now Ezreal's getting his item house. He's getting his item spike, and once Ezreal gets those item spikes. It's going to turn the situation around quite, you know, quite fondly. And since no turrets have gone down yet, it's like, you know, if I feel like Ezreal is going to begin to take, you know, an out, just as much as an outstanding lead for his team as Lantern is for theirs. Ooh, Midget on a hill might be in a little bit of trouble here. A lovely ult is simply sinking his fangs in. That's going to be an easy pickup and Midget on a hill pushed way too far up with no backup. His support wasn't in lane. 88 keys. You need to be so careful here. Your turret is gone, and first turret secured in the mid lane, and uh, I think that surprises a total, a grand total of zero people. I feel like, yeah, it feels like that at this point. Like, both teams are resetting themselves quite nicely, although we have more attention coming towards the top. Ekrem sort of made himself known. Aurelia does come up, but nothing comes about from it, because I think they understood that, you know, Maokai sitting on his turret, there's no point for anything else. Exactly, as we see, as our Vanguard's Edge is dropped onto 88 keys and uh, burning oh. him out. That, that is a cruel way to pick up a kill. I'm not sure what happened there, but, or should I say, I'm not really sure what happened, but I think I was pretty much finally like, he went right on top of Cassidy and just like, he let, he let him get away, but without popping Ignite to be able to secure the kill. I think Lantern had this, you know, premeditated quite nicely. It's like, He's done the math equation. He knows the answer. Now he's just letting the whole. Now he's just letting it all unfold quite nicely. Exactly. And look at the way he's able to do this. 88 keys has no resistances. Like he's got a stacking rod of ages. He has the buildings of a Seraph's embrace, and that's realistically all he's got going for him. No armor, no resistances. Little health coming out of the rod of ages. Like Aurelia, true damage, a Trinity Force, a Tiamat. Like what? He needs to start building the buildings of his, sorry, he needs to start building the likes of his Zonya's Hourglass right now. It would be nice defensively. Oh my lord. It's looking a little bit disastrous here. I mean, they're really pushed backwards. Like, Alistair had to pop his ulti more defensively than aggressively. Exactly, Luton. Having some fun on the top side, but the next dragon is spawning in about five seconds. It is going to be another wind dragon going in favor of Caraba High, sitting on only 2,000 gold ahead of their opposite numbers, and good credit for Fairvale keeping up. This uh, Caribar has had little mercy, little hesitation, and given how hard they're winning through the middle lane right now with a 6-2 Aurelia compared to the 1-5 Cassadin, you have to give credit for Fairvale. Their other two lanes are doing really well to keep up with it, keep up, and actually get ahead of their opposite numbers. That is true. However, looking at the breakdown of, you know, gold accumulation between, they're actually putting on fours. Fox in a, trying to go in. The Vanguard's Edge is dropping. The Seed Chain is coming out, and that is going to be enough. Lanson, you are powerful, my friend, but not powerful enough to go one versus two. I think he was feeling a little bit too invincible right there. You know, he pops the ult, he gets on top, but I don't think he was expecting Cassidy, who's like right now one and five, to be able to come in and help him out. And because Alistair was right around the corner, it, felt, it was pretty much a grim situation regardless how we decide to look at it. I mean, it really doesn't really have an escape unless she jumps from minion to minion, and they would have to be executes that I have to add in as well. Otherwise, she'd just be jumping to one minion and just running for the rest of it, like playing a game of Chasey, but with no added benefits. But looking at the breakdown of gold accumulation between both teams, even though it's roughly just under 3,000, we can see there is a massive difference between the mid laners. 9.9 .9 coming from... Lanson as Aurelia, and 6.8 from Cassidy. 
so far, I only really see two major differences uh, from Fairvale as opposed to Caring Bar, and that is Rexo and Ezreal at this point. I mean, 8.5 thousand gold to 7.3, and then Rexo coming in at 8.3 to 7.8. Like, we could clearly see that some play some champions, or should, sorry, some summoners are doing better than others, but that's, that's pretty much what's like, just because they're doing well, and even though the gold accumulation is only 2,000, it really shows that it's evenly spread out, which is really nice to see from a team-based environment. Exactly, as we are seeing a bit of an adjustment of the lanes. Lanson has been delegated to the top side of the map, while Ludens will be taking the bottom, and Midget Fat and Fatsy combination will be taking over the middle lane responsibility. So farming up, and for Lanson, this is the opening to get a split push game going, but I think there is a solution coming on the top side. 88 keys and Fox side to give a bit of a visit, but can't force the gank. Oh my oh. lord! Whoa, that was quite a surprising bash up right there. Just the uh, just his W followed by his Q and his ulti in succession. Just ouch. Morgana, I don't think even Morgana's Black Shield would have been able to save her from such a combo like that. I really don't think so. That was so much damage so quickly. That didn't have a chance to flash out of that one. He is building the Zonya's Hourglass, so he needs that get his team fight potential up but for right now losing their mid uh that support like that they are losing control of the mid lane of the map and they need to do something about that now because if they lose that mid lane turret they lose every opening in this game that is true and like since both like both teams have now reset themselves quite nicely what i'm i'm looking at the minimap and i'm liking what i'm seeing mainly from fairvale which is warding like we're seeing at least three wards happening just above mid lane, like we see one on the op on the opposition side, we see one in River Bush, and one at Pixel Bush. I think I'm pretty sure that's the Pixel Bush, and we see a control ward happening over at their blue buff, which is really nice to see. So they fair about, even though they're a little bit behind on some fronts, they're doing well to try and make up for the difference with vision on the map. I mean, the more vision you have, the more you'll be able to sort of like you know prepare. It's like playing a game of chess, but in this instance, you can actually see where most of the pieces are. Exactly, and talking about the pieces, I have to give a little bit of credit to Fairvale High School right now. Lanson was doing a lot of work in the early game, getting himself that big lead, but now Shammy, he hasn't lost any damage on his turret. He hasn't been really threatened by the Aurelia, and as long as they can nullify the high impact Aurelia's had in the early game, like, look at this, Lanson, he has, he has to tank the turret. <laughs> Shammy's not was... giving him access to the turret. This is huge. And a really good thing for Sammy, because this is all Malkai needs to do. He just has to hold the lane, uh -oh. but the Vanguard did just drop. They are going to go for a bit of a tower dive. Lanson trying to drop turret aggro. They all love it. This Malkai, super tanky. They finally take him out, but they had to burn so many resources in order to take out the tree. Honestly, that was that was a very that was a very interesting... I thought Malkai was actually going to be a bit longer, but just... Are really able to just dance back, you know, it's pretty much play a single man tango, just, you know, running back and forth, allowing them to do some damage. I was a little bit skeptical as to why he was still running back and forth. No way. With Black Shield, you've got to be, this has to be a joke right now. They're taking This has to be Baron. a pressure play. Sure. They need, to, I think this is the burn 88 to keep teleport. They cannot be doing this in all seriousness. They are peeling away now. There we go. They're about to say, there's way too aggressive. A 24 minute Baron at 43,000 gold. Like, no, you're no, you're in no position to force Baron right now. That felt too good to be true. Like this has to be a dr this has to be a dream game right now. Just to be able to take Baron like that. Like if they cleared it up, this is this is quite the opener. I mean, oh no, Lanson. Oh, Lanson's gonna was... get boxed in. He looks like he might. No, he gets him out. Oh, that was a beautiful double stun coming out of Lanson, and of course with Mev Emphis standing behind his mid lane, he does get out, but. That was super risky. I honestly felt that Fairville potentially had Lanson, Hook, Light, and Sinker right there. I honestly feel like that was more or less... I, I think that was more or less just like a ticking time bomb. Like, Aurelian... Indeed. So, we'll have to see as Dragon is the next play. The uh, Cloud Dragon uh, going to be the focus for these teams as I fear we actually it may be a little bit out of sync with the stream so we will have to get a time to re-sync up as teams are sorting themselves out trying to get vision and of course it is the Baron dance so what we're going to do Reinhardt's going to pause at 26 minutes um, and we will sync up with 
our broadcaster so we can resume. So let me know when you're at 26. Done. Oh, well, that was easy. All right, we're going to go back in <laughs> at three, two, one, go. And hopefully that will be the end of the sinking issues. 12 kills to 11, 45 gold, 45,000 gold to 42,000 gold in favor right now of Karang Bahar. And it's the Baron dance right now as we are seeing Lanson trying to force something on Shami on the top side, but his reinforcements are not far away. The dancer needs to try forces against tree reinforcements are coming in the cc it's finally landing cool panda has arrived the tree is taking out quite low but he's still pretty damn healthy for a tank and now the turnaround's coming in is this the fight the, the hecarim forced the flash away but it's not going to be enough it looks like they are getting the rinse around on this fight a double kill coming out for the rexai she's on the back line a triple kill for the zersai ezreal grabbing himself one and karimba high Pushed themselves too far forward. They didn't have any vision, and Ludens didn't teleport. No, that was. It was. It's very concerning. Like they had so much going for them, and then just such a surprising turnaround. And from that, like Playbear are now capitalizing on taking him down by taking Baron. I mean, they had themselves in the perfect position for this. They were sort of pressured topside a little bit, but. Because they were also close to Baron, and they managed to, you know, almost, like, they took out all members that were present there. Nar was doing his own thing, which does raise an eyebrow right there. He, I think he was trying to go for the full one split, and the rest of Carrying Bar, you know, they felt a little bit overconfident themselves. Like, they, they've got the guts, but in this case, I don't think they were... It was unfortunate they didn't have the glory. And exactly. <laughs> it sort of, like, worked too, unf like, too unfavorable, only because they pretty much nearly got aced. And Fayetteville just pretty much went straight ahead and went for Baron buff. And that's going to give them a little bit more comfortability to essentially turn this game around. No, they don't have as many turrets yet. No, they don't have any dragons um, under their belt. But they do have, they've finally gone ahead in gold accumulation as a whole. And they'll be able to start, they'll be able to start pushing lanes and try and catch up. I mean, considering they've only got one turret so far and they've got no dragons. The fact that they're actually ahead in gold accumulation speaks volumes on its own. Exactly, and the turrets that are standing, specifically the tier 1 in top and mid, you can treat them as standing gold, especially when you have access to a Baron buff like they do right now. The Siege is going to be very difficult for them to stop. Aurelia shouldn't be able to clear the waves. The Kai'Sa shouldn't really be able to clear the waves either. Luden's going to have to walk up with a boomerang, but... Right now, Karabar are trying to find a solution. They're saying, okay, you want to throw everyone mid. We're going to try a 1-3-1. One, one. But I just don't think it's going to be enough. Aurelia, I feel like she's needed with her team right now. I feel, I'm feeling, i feeling the same vibe as you. I'm Whoa, hey, 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 you need to be a little bit careful there, my friend. You're going way too far forward. The potential turnaround, they are going to grab themselves the turret. While all this is happening, Lantern is split pushing the turret. They need to send someone to deal with it. They are sending Shami. 88 off to go deal with that. They do get themselves one turret, but the fact that you're trading turrets while you have Baron buff is not a good sign for the future, Fairdale. Fairvale. No, that is that is actually a really outstanding point, but they did manage to push very aggressively. I mean, they managed to catch up with at least two turrets that time. Even though Ludens and Lantern were split pushing top and bottom, it was still nice to see that they managed to hold their own quite well. And now we're seeing a bit of a reset happening, a, a few things flying around the place. I do want to point out, like, looking at both sides, like, looking at blue side of them, we've seen a nice, we're seeing some nice extra vision happening around uh, Fairvale's red jungle. Like, we're seeing three, three regular wards and a control ward sitting around. And, like, in response at the moment from Fairvale, um, from Fairvale, it's, like, it's sort of, like, it more evenly scattered that... They're trying to keep vision on a more general basis rather than a specific area. I mean, there is a bit of fog of war happening, but they're doing well to try and play around it as much as they can. Exactly. See what vision games are played, and of course, what picks come as a result of the vision game. So, well, something I do want to something I do want to bring a look to is, of course, the items that players are rocking. Cool Panda grabbing himself the fourth item of the Guardian Angel. So the safe Ezreal is now a lot safer. And the side of Fairvale are setting themselves up around the Infernal Dragon, the first one of the game as well. So, so second Infernal Dragon of the game. And this could potentially be Fairvale's first dragon. I think it'd be a really good one to grab considering... Whoa, that's the nature's gr grass coming out. They do force the fly out of the Hecarim. And oh, it looks no, like Lanson is in so much trouble right now. Everyone is hunting him down, but 
Ludens is pushing on the top side of the map. They need to simply drag this out, simply delay it, let the Nars flip push. He has to access to the teleport as well. Is he going to come down for Dragon is the real question. It, it, I don't think they're going to be able to do much better unless they plan to deal. Unfortunately, not a, not a successful deal. I think Kaiser tried making a sneaky uh, missile barrage, throwing, um, you know, throwing it out in the middle of nowhere. There was no vision for them, so it was it was nice to see that you know they tried that you know they took a gamble. Unfortunately, it wasn't. A, unfortunately, it wasn't a solid Memphis. Trying to force the turret down, but not the decision you want to be making. Ninja on a hill now, disengaging a beautiful double stun coming out. The Kaiser is doing a lot of damage, but can she stay alive is the real question. It looks like the engage is slowing down from Fairvale, but they take their pick on the jungler and are happy with it. That was very unfortunate for uh, Hecarim right there. Just he tries to get some damage going. Kaiser has her two item power spike, and those two items I do have to specify. Renan's Hurricane and Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Just being able to three, attack three targets so easily, especially since her passive doesn't get reset when she changes target. It just adds on to you know their current their current standpoint. But it was really unfortunate they didn't get enough damage output going. I mean, you've got Maokai and Rek'Sai both on screen at the moment, becoming very tanky. I mean, we've got we've got a completed Black Cleaver and Steric, um, no, not Steric's Gate, what's it called? Titanic, Titanic Hydra. Hydra. So that's at least 800 extra health in his uh, in his health pool. And it looks like he's gone towards a Steric's Gate with uh, Giant's Gore, I think it's called at the moment. Ooh, Vanguard's edge dropped on the top side of the map. 88 keys might be in a little bit above it. Does Lansing continue to hunt him down? With Hecarim in his back pocket, I see no reason why not to this. Land the Hecarim ulties to try and get an assist, but no such luck. Close, but no cigar, as they commonly say. I really like aggression company. Nah, he's trying to throw himself around the place because he doesn't, because he didn't decide to go for a Blade of the Ruin King. He's not going to be able to pick up anything so soon. I mean, he can do damage, but Lands only Memphis. when he gets his passive off. You need to be a little bit careful. They're very aggressive right now, but. A lot of posturing of Baron spawning in 10 seconds. 88 keys is not going to be alive, and that could potentially be the, the trigger puller for them right now. Say, hey, there's no jungle, there's no mid laner around. Yes, they have a jungle who is even level, but if we can grab ourselves the Baron, that's going to put us in a great spot. But what would be better, they need to kill Fox. They need to kill this Rex, but the starting Baron, they need to be so careful. I have to agree. They definitely need to be very careful, but they do have a bit more freedom of movement. Like, we've got Ludens poking around, trying to prevent them from jumping in at the moment. They have no vision. Teleport. Whoa. Fox goes in super early by himself. Actually, another professor team is jumping in on top of the Baron. And actually, they might be able to take it away. They will grab themselves oh, the no. Baron. Cool Panda picking it up on the backside of the fight with the Ezreal. The Maokai is going to be the sacrificial lamb. But the Baron secured for Fairvale once again. Carrying Baha'i are having a lot of issue with the Baron buff. They definitely are. That is the second Baron taken away, and the first time they were actually, uh, it was actually stolen from underneath their noses. I think Bearbell have really got themselves under like a nicely calculated situation. Just seeing that teleport, you know, popped from Maokai right there. It's sort of. I think we saw Karen Bar run around in a bit of a panic, and then just like you know, Cassidy coming in and just jumping around the place. He did hurt a few of them away from Baron which gave them a little bit more leg room and a, a bigger window of opportunity to be able to steal it. But I think we can all agree that Ezra's ulti made a factoring difference, just being able to hit at least three members and taking away almost half of their health. Uh, this is what we call a deadly Ezra once he's... He's got four items already. He's working towards... Like, he's got that last whisper. I can only assume he's going to go for either... I think it's a mortal reminder to sort of reduce some healing going on between a couple... Uh, of champions, specifically a rally with you know completed conqueror and Billboarder Cutlass at the moment. I mean, Billboarder Cutlass works well on her Q, so she gets extra healing from that to uh, to boot. It's a very simple math equation, but you know if you can sort of cut that math equation answer in half, you're gonna have a much more comfortable time. And from what we see, that like Fair Vale are really creating themselves a comfortable position to get ahead right now. Exactly, they're grabbing themselves the out of the last tier one turret and are looking to be a bit aggressive on the tier two because again we talked about it. There isn't a whole lot of wave clear against Baron Minion. Sure, they're tough to kill in the first place, but who's meant to step up if Kaisa steps up too far forward? She's gonna end up dying. They need to be so careful here as my league is entirely freaked out. 
I'm feeling just as freaked out at the moment. Just seeing that W, the EW, sorry, the QW, Ezreal in a single succession on Kaisa. That was scary on its own, but it looks like we see it ulti coming out from Maokai to chase down Irelia. It does connect onto Lantern, but Lantern in a two versus one. He does have the Guardian Angel available, have Derek's is pop the Vanguard's Edge as well, but he does go down. The question is, is he able to get anything out of the revive? The answer is no, he is not, and taken down. This oh. Aurelia, who was a menace in the early game, is struggling in late. Oh, she it. I do, ha I do have to agree, she is struggling late in a 2v1 situation. She had her Sterics Gage, she had her Guardian Angel, but that still didn't help her, and that really put Carrying Bar behind. Like, now they're essentially going to take an uncontested Elder Dragon at this point, which is beneficial for them, because they have one Dragon, so it's already going to be, you know, a bit more of a step up for them. Whereas if Carrying Bar took it, well, let's just hope they don't go into a 5v5 situation. Exactly, they need to be so careful. The dragon has reset itself. They are throwing a moose. They're not able to steal. Sorry, I got excited for a couple of seconds. Emphis tried to take it away, but no oh. such luck. The follow-up ADA keeps diving oh. into the back line with that Catherine. Can he stay alive? Yes, he can. The redemption coming out. It's oh. not going to become a lovely Nara into the wall, but it's simply not going to be enough, unfortunately. Caraba high against the Elder Dragon. Simply not enough. They lose two members. This is this is pretty much turning out like the the late game scenario that we were. I mean, some champions do come to light once they get the two item power spike, or they just hit a certain level where you know they get a huge reduction in some in something on their kit, whether it's their passive or an ability when it's maximized, it's like two times the damage. It is it's really interesting to see how much this game has turned around in favor of Fairvale, and they're really capitalizing on. You know, this un this unseen advantage at the moment. Mel, like, Nara's done well to go up against them early in Mega Form, though. Irelia, she was shining, like, she was shining like a diamond early, but now she's getting caught out way too often, and it's really putting Caring Bar behind because she's leaving him in a 4v5 situation. As well, uh, there won't be enough damage output because she does account for, I, I can only assume, is like half their team's um, damage output at this point. We do, see, we do see Hecarim and Aurelia with completed uh, Trinity Forces, so they will have extra damage per base attack after an ability. They've both got a completed Sterics Gauge, but other than that, it's looking it's looking a little bit, you know, in favor of Fairbell at the moment. Exactly. I mean, we talked about early game went in favor of Karen, but they had a winning lane in the top lane. They had Aurelia, who should be able to leverage pressure in the mid, and they wanted Kaiser to scale on. That's exactly what we got. We got Aurelia solo killing 88 keys in the lane, getting himself ahead. But once the mid game roamed around, the impact of the Aurelia was greatly reduced. She wasn't able to get a lot of side lane pressure uh, as the Maokai was denying her. And oh. 88 keys was able to scale up. We talked about how playing against a Cassidy is almost like playing against a timer. Well, unfortunately, the timer has gone off. 88 keys sitting on five fully completed items and the, the Zonya's Hourglass getting prepared in his final back pocket as well. I... Fevel survived the rough early game. They have an online cast and they have an Ezreal at full build right now. They have an unkillable Maokai. I, I, I really struggle with Kara, but they need to look at the likes of Midget on a hill. He cannot afford to die right now. We're seeing Lanson taking an inhibitor turret. He's still continuing the trade. Whoa, Lantern actually going for Shammy, decides, nah, I don't need objectives, I need kills, but I don't think you're killing this Maokai. Meanwhile, an engage coming in in the middle area, fight, Cool Panda untouched right now. The Guardian Angel still available, throws himself in, actually. Moon do doing what he can, but with Midget on a hill already dead, I fear this fight is already decided right here. They are back away, 88 keys now. Lantern Whoa. is doing what he can, he will grab himself the kill onto the Kassadin. No, Kassadin gets away, and the Sterix gauge for Lantern playing with his food a little bit too much, but does grab the inhibit at the end of the day. That was- also gonna go down, surely. That was quite a turnaround, like, yeah, it does go down. Oh! Whoa! Just look at that aerial! Just popping off like a popcorn, like, in a popcorn machine right there. Just, he's really making plays for his team. He's really showing a lot of damage output, and I do have to highlight, he's actually still got that perfect KDA at the moment. He is flying ahead on the radar. And I think this is going to be a third Baron, a second uncontested. I do see three members from Carrying Bar making making route towards Baron. They so Baron. careful. They better, don't know though. if it's starting Baron or simply a vision bay as we are seeing Enthus walking up. He may try and steal it, but not able to. 
Dober Noodles headbutting him out of the way, making sure his team picks up the third uh, Baron of the game. And surely, Fairvale with the third Baron will be able to find a way to end. You know, I gotta, I gotta say that Alice, that that combination from Alice there to deny Hecarim to be able to try and steal Baron like that, he is a very slippery little noodle. And it's nice to see. Like he's he's really got his head screwed on right now. Like he's in, he's a hundred percent in focus. He's in he's in fifth gear. He's trying to make sure that his team stays ahead for as long as possible. I mean, his score pretty much reflects how well he's performing for his team. And it's really nice to see that we've got effective communication happening from both sides, as well as uh, good combinations and like good motor skills happening from you know every single player at the moment. I do have to I do have to highlight that Aurelia will need to start playing with her team a little bit more because she is becoming like, you know, the major player of their team. If she doesn't if she makes herself if she gets caught out essentially, is what I'm trying to say. If she gets caught out, it's really gonna put them behind. And I don't think they can afford to lose someone in a in a in a five v five scenario this late into the game. I mean at forty one fifty, it's pretty much going to be whoever gets caught out first essentially determines you know, who's going to be, who's, which team is going to be put far behind. Exactly, and I think both of these teams are more than aware of that fact, Reinhardt. They're both playing super, super safe right now at 42 minutes. But the issue is that, unfortunately, playing super, super safe may put you in a little bit of a position right now because we are seeing Fairvale set up around the second uh, Elder Dragon of this game. And if they secure themselves this objective, I really don't think that Carabao can win a fight against the the push of a Baron against the push of an Elder Dragon. You know, most members in the game now sitting on six items. And the only combat stat difference will be that uh, Elder Dragon as both teams have themselves one uh, Infernal Dragon a piece. I'm really concerned for Carabao High. They need to get something out of this. And I think they have to deny the Dragon, but they are going to have to team fight for it. Shami does have teleport available to him as he is on the top side of the map. But actually, we're seeing Emphis diving in. Three versus four. They need to get the fight now. There is no teleport being channeled. Finally coming up, but it isn't going to be enough. The Kaiser is already gone. Flash heal will not even use. And now the potential turnaround is coming up. Cool Pandas is untouched at the fight. The edge finally arriving. And this is where the fight is going to go. Fox did what he could. Now Cool Panda is going to do the cleanup duty. A triple kill coming out for Fox right here. Can it get more? Shami. Hunting himself down the Gnar, and this team fight is truly over. They had a beautiful engage to start it off, but it simply was not enough. Cool Panda and Fox doing what they can. Lanson trying to get something back, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He has to recall. I felt like that was a Melbourne Cup uh, title race. Just you see, you see Hecker charging like he's, he's pretty much like you know, the fast meme right there. And it just like begins to bounce around players. Like you see one ahead, then you see another head, and then you see some fantastic plays. Like I do have to highlight, Rexai did well to actually knock them up, not once. I think there was a few knockups happening in that fight that really threw uh, Caring Bar off their game. And since they've got three real strong tanks on their side, plus they've got uh, Kassadin with the completed Zonny's Hourglass that it really sort of like, you know, it threw them off what, you know, their mind strategy. Like, they did have the advantage, but as soon as Kassadin pops the Johnny's Hourglass last second right there, when he was at like 5% health, it really turned the tides and it sort of forced like Irelia to actually back away from the team fight. Exactly, and Midget on a Hill died with Flash and Heal available. You cut your late game, Kaiser, cannot afford to be dying in those sort of situations. He has himself now a Zonya's Hourglass to try to keep himself safe. The question is, will he be able to? As Baron has worn off, but Elder Dragon is still kicking around for a little bit, and they need to crack open the base right here. Farewell, it's all great and dandy winning the team fights, but if you're not breaking open the enemy base, if you're not taking inhibitors, it's kind of redundant. It definitely is, and like as I like as you were speaking, I'm looking at both trading bows when trading blows with and Ezreal's Q is doing an astonishing large amount of damage. Like, I think I saw Arela lose, like, 25% of her total health from a single Q. And that's without um, W highlighted on top of her. So this Ezreal is really dangerous right now. And if they... If Caring Bar don't do anything soon... It, it, I feel like... I, I, this might be too soon to say, but I think it could be lights out for Caring Bar if they're not careful. Like, they really need to try and plan around catching Ezreal out. There Indeed, is but... two Guardian Angels completed, which is nice to see. 
And even though Aurelia's got that Guardian Angel, I don't think it's going to help them greatly. Exactly, we'll have to find out. But if there's anything that Karen Bar has said to me so far, it's the fact that if they are in the put into the vault, but they have to force a fight, they're not going to hesitate to pull the trigger. So I'm hoping to see the, uh, the do or die engage coming out of them soon. I feel like it'll be over this mid lane turret, but Baron is up in another 30 seconds. Are we really going to have a four Baron game at this point? It looks like we might just get there. But the question is, can they break the inhibitor line? Looks like they may try to force a flash. Oh. They have got the Kaiser out of position. The Kaiser is huge. The Kaiser goes down before the fight really begins. They are in a disaster. The Kaiser now finally gets out of love. Ezreal, though, is still untouched on the back line. Midget on a hill trying to do what he can. The tent front line is diving near on top of Aurelia. Oh. Does go down. However, they are getting a really oh. good position. A double kill coming out. Three kills coming out. And this might just be the fight. Aurelia. And Nah get out alive, but with three members dead, that could potentially be the game. Shami tanking up the turret, but forced to back away for now. Minions aren't there yet. No, minions are definitely not there yet, but this could still be the end game scenario. They're really pushing around. They have Elder Dragon. They have two Guardian Angels. Aurelia is just bouncing down. Around. Aurelia trying to do what she can, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The second Nexus turret goes down, the Nah throws himself uh -oh. in, gets multiple men against the wall. But it's simply nice. not gonna be enough. And Fairvale High School take the game, stall out what was a disastrous early game, and take it late at 40 at 47 minutes. A very interesting game from both sides. And now with that game concluded, Fairvale have claimed their victory. It is now a tie for the top of the ladder at four wins and one loss to each team. This is beginning to get really spicy, Eatos. Exactly, and that was a pleasure of a game to watch. We saw Karabah High, they took control of the game early with Lance and Aurelia, but the issue is they didn't know what to do with it come the mid game. They threw him in a side lane against a Maokai that he was never going to be able to kill, never be able to push up against, and it sort of nullified any and all early game leads that Lanson had built for his team. And then you get to the late game, the Kastadin, that ticking time bomb finally went off. The unkillable Maokai on the top side. And Ezreal, sure, you can't build double tier, but Cool Panda doesn't need it with the amount of damage he was able to output. No, even though that did get locked out from him, it was still nice to see that Ezreal can come in line and can be a very uh, strong carry. You know, what, just being able to play the way that Cool Panda did this game. Exactly, but that is going to be the 5 o'clock meta round wrapped up, guys. Of course, congratulations for Fairvale High School for taking the game. Caraba High, I'm sure you're going to get blood and vengeance in the next time you two teams meet. But on behalf of the broadcast group, that is going to be the game wrapped up and concluded. So please remember that there is going to be a game at the 8 o'clock time slot, AEST, for the Western Australian bracket. So we'll hope to see you for that round. We'll see you later.